Hi, Chris McClune here with Fire Apparatus and Emergency Equipment. Welcome to our inaugural Rev Fire Group Apparatus Conference and Expo. We've got a great day of content ready for you today. We've got, we've got from 10 to 11, our walk around. That's gonna be on two E1 trucks. From 11 to one, we've got the Rev showroom meetings. One to two, FDIC education. Remember, this is powered by FDIC International. We're gonna have must-haves for first arriving with Jonah Smith. And then from two to 4.30, we'll have Rev, we'll have Rev showroom meetings once again. Wanted to introduce my guest today. First, we have Jeff Gaskin. He is with East West Fire Apparatus Consultants. He's a 42-year veteran of the fire service. Cutting over to our Rev Fire Group representatives today, we have Justin Rice, our aerial sales manager for E1. We have Larry Daniels, director of sales for E1. And we have Mike Vernig, v vice president of sales for the Rev Fire Group. Mike. Yeah, good morning, Chris and Jeff. Uh, wanted to say thank you for being part of this event and how excited we are to showcase our products in this new venue. Hey, perfect. Thank you for having us. Like we said, we have two great trucks today from E1. We've got an aerial and we have a pumper. So let's jump right into the video on the HR100. Hey folks, I'm Justin Rice, Aerial Sales Manager with E1, and today we have a treat for you guys. We're going to show you this E1 HR100 single axle quint, specifically built for our dealer Hallmark RTC here in Ocala, Florida. Thank you for tuning in today to the Rev Fire Truck Expo. We're excited to show you the products we have on the ground today, and thank you for tuning in. Some of the really exciting features we have on our 2020 Typhoon cab, all metal interior, no more plastic inside this cab. It is all rugged fire service ready material inside. We also have improved visibility from front, from rear to front. Now we got a great line of sight. We've increased the windshield size so now the driver can have more visibility out of the front. We have all vinyl seats inside of here. This truck's equipped with a full medical cabinet in the back with all vinyl SCBA seats. This truck's equipped with the Hale DSD 1500 gallon a minute fire pump. We have our decontamination discharge here. So now after fire scene, these guys can come up here they can hook up their hose to there, turn on the decon discharge. They're able to clean their gear off and clean the, all the Carson engines on from the fire they were in. We're running three cross lays up here at the top, 500 gallon water tank, and we're running an FRC pump boss for the pressure governor. Really small, ergonomic pump panel here. Keeps the wheelbase down, keeps everything tight on this truck. This truck's got a 235 inch wheelbase, so highly maneuverable, 500 gallons of water, 1500 gallon minute pump all on a single axle chassis. This is our extruded aluminum body. We are the founders of the extruded aluminum body in the industry. We're excited to have on this product full height, full depth compartments, 170 cubic feet of compartment space on this truck. So you can see I'm almost six foot tall and this compartment's well taller than me. What that means for a bigger compartment is that you have more opportunities for shelving, tool storage, all the organization you need to fit your truck's needs for your department. One of the many things I love about this product is the fact that we have this on our torque box chassis. Like all of our awesome aerials we have, we utilize a torque box. Our integral torque box is the heart and soul of what we do for our aerials. So for our aerials that have the torque box, like this 100 foot single axle quint, we're able to suspend this truck on three jack legs. We can balance this truck completely, maintaining with three jacks. What that means is there's no frame deflection. The frame is tight, the outriggers are tight, and in addition to having a hundred foot on a single axle with 500 gallons of water, all the compartment space, all the ground ladders is having an 11 foot outrigger spread. Not only are we get to hanging out with this awesome truck right here, we get to fly this thing with wireless controls. With this handheld right here, I can set the jacks, fly the ladder. Everything I need to do to fly the ladder is right here. So if you, your department has limited manpower, and you just want an easier way to get the ladder up to do what you have to do and one person can take care of a lot of different jobs, 
this is what you need right here. So from the ground here, I'm able to fly this ladder. All the operations I'd have with this turntable, all right here at my fingertips. I have full monitor controls, full ladder operations, you name it. I even have the ability to turn off and on the air horn if I needed to. So full control of the ladder, full control of the nozzle. And for the end of it, when you're all done for the day, what I can get out of this truck too is automatic cradling. So with a couple commands, I'm able to raise and lower this thing and it's able to go in the cradle all by itself. This is our HR100 ladder. This ladder is built using our legacy rung through rail. This has been our long lasting tried and true workhorse of ladder design. These guys are running a TFT nozzle. They really have a two and a half discharge valve under monitor. What this is really cool for is if you have parking garages or any high rise that you want to close off your master stream to and quickly get a two and a half inch line to the tip of the ladder. Our HR100 on our single axle quint chassis comes with a negative six to 80 degree operating angle, 750 pound tip load dry with a 500 pound tip load wet, all while maintaining our industry standard two and a half to one structural safety factor exceeding NFPA by 25%. This truck has the E1 Advanced Aerial Control System Deluxe. This has every single thing an aerial operator is gonna need. All live time, all available at his fingertips, you can see. Tip load, distributed load, waterway flow, pressure, everything the aerial needs to operate, the operator can see here. This ladder is so simple to operate, the operator can walk up on a turntable, press controller power, and he's ready to fly. The advantage of us too is you get variable ramping, so you choose how you want the ladder to operate, whether you want it to run smoother or harder. You choose. All at the fingertips, all your choice, all with the E1 Advanced Aero Control System Deluxe. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Rev Fire Truck Expo. Thank you for taking the time out to check out this E1 HR100 single axle quint. We're super proud of this product, super proud of our what we do here in Ocala. We thank you guys for taking a look at, at our trucks. Please feel free to ask any questions you need to. And if you need any more information on this truck or any of our other fantastic aerial models, reach out to one of our amazing dealers that we have across the United States. Thank you so much for your time. Please be safe. All right, that takes us to the end of our video there. Don't worry, we have a captive audience with Justin today. Uh, he'll be available in just a few minutes to take all your questions. Uh, if you do have a question to ask, there is an ask a question box on your screen in front of you. Send that over. We'll get to as many as we can from the audience today. If we can't, don't worry. You've got the, the two separate rev, rev, uh, rev meeting areas that you can go to uh, after after the truck walk through so if for some reason we can't get to your question uh, today feel free to go there there will be rev representatives there to to answer any questions you might have you'll also notice that justin is not wearing a mask don't worry we are practicing all social distancing guidelines as put forth by the cdc uh, so don't don't worry about that. He is uh, he is he is in good hands down in Ocala. So Jeff, I would like to send things over to you first, and just kind of get some of your first impressions of the truck now that you've seen the video. It's a great rig. Um, it's got a it's got a great footprint to it. Two hundred thirty five inch wheelbase. Um, the uh, E one's done a great job with the design and, and getting this hundred foot aerial device on a single axle chassis. I it think really one is, of the things um, the fire department. Sorry, Jeff, go ahead. I think one of the things that fire departments need to keep in mind when they're looking at single axle aerials is that the the one you know everything with a fire with fire apparatus is is a, a trade off. Every decision you make ha has a, a an effect on another part of the truck. And with the single axle aerial, you you have to watch your the amount of equipment that you're carrying because you have a lot of weight on these axles um, and you have to be very careful about how you how you equip the truck not only when you first put it in service but over its life so you have to make sure that you're planning for that and this truck really is a, a, a representation i think of, of of a trend in the fire service right now which is to get that maximum vertical reach down onto a single axle and i know i, I know you've probably got a ton of questions 
for Justin. So why don't we why don't we start moving Justin over to the truck, and then we can get into some of the things that that Jeff uh, that Jeff has. We've already got a few, as you should be able to see them. Uh, some of the questions coming through. Uh, so keep asking those questions. We're gonna we're gonna definitely set aside time before we get to the to the next video. So Jeff. One of the one of the things that you just mentioned was that compartmentation. And not only do you need to, when you're specking these out, not only take into consideration the weight of the equipment as it is right now, you also need to plan space for later uh, compartmentation wise, um, you know, at least, you know, a little space to, for expansion. But talk a little bit about some of the things that you need to, in, in your travels throughout the country, talk a little bit about some of the things you need to talk about in terms of where on the truck uh that 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 equipment is you can't you know obviously you can't have the heaviest stuff all in you know a back corner or stuff like that what are some of the things you're seeing uh, as we get justin over to the truck um in terms of some of the challenges fire departments are having in in that in that laying out of the equipment and, and specking appropriately well the the nfpa and uh, this kind of gets lost once a truck is delivered to fire departments unfortunately but the nfpa has weight and balance um criteria in in 1901 both uh front to rear and side to side and in the last 10 or 15 years the the type of work and the amount of 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 work that fire departments have been have been tasked with or have kind of been pushed over into the fire service uh much more ems work um you know uh much more uh response to weather emergencies we keep adding equipment onto our rigs when i try when i lay out a rig i'm i'm a big fan of what i call one stop shopping if i'm on an airbag call or a call where i need airbags i want to go to one compartment on that truck and i want to be able to get everything i need to deploy that equipment same thing with saws same thing with hydraulic rescue tools and a lot of times in the fire service um and this is a big challenge things get put wherever it fits and you end up having to spend a lot of time and energy literally running around the truck spend some time making sure that your truck is laid out so that it works for your operation i hope i see we've got justin over there so although i said jeff was going to get a chance to talk i lied i just have one other question just in staying with the in staying with the equipment layout Justin, on that truck, and then I promise Jeff, you'll you'll get a chance to you'll get a chance to take it from here. On that truck, what was the uh, total cubic feet uh, for compartmentation, and uh, what uh, with the HR100, are there other are there other body configurations that you can get more, or or even or even if you don't need as much less? Absolutely, that's a great question. So on this current truck we have in front of us, there's 170 cubic feet of compartment space. We do have options to decrease water and you're able to gain an additional 35 to 40 cubic feet additional just by switching your water tank. Okay, Jeff, do you wanna take it from here with some of the questions you had? On, on that note, Justin, let me just follow up on the water. What currently does this truck have in capacity? 500 gallons total. Okay. What is the, um, what's the gross vehicle weight rating on this, on this apparatus? 59,000 pounds, that's a 24,000 pound front axle and a 35,000 pound rear axle. And your rear suspension sprung or air? You can choose either or. So now we have the ability to choose spring or air ride suspensions for whatever the department likes. And since you're right at the front bumper, why don't we start, why don't we start right there and work our way um, right down the side of the truck, um, keep the flow yep. a little easier. Uh, let's talk about some of the front bumper options. I see a hose well uh, on this apparatus. Um, you know, front bumpers have become uh, almost a design craze in the last few years. Why don't we talk about some of the things that you guys have available? So what you're seeing here on this truck is a traditional layout with an inch and a half discharge on top. About 250 feet worth of inch and a, a two, inch and a half can go in here. Bumper options are so, you know, you, you can do so many different configurations and we're wide open with that. So you can have everything from a traditional hose lay like this all the way up to cross lays. We can actually do a 28 inch full depth bumper that'll give you 200 feet of inch and three quarter and 200 feet of two and a half or 
to, uh, to be an adventure three quarters for both lays and goal lays. So the options are, are endless as far as what you can do for your front bumper option. Now, uh, let me just interject real quick here, Jeff. Just uh, this this occurred to me. Um, not that we want to add too many more uh, duties and responsibilities to a quint, but uh, could that also be configured to maybe have like a like a like a uh, hydraulic hose reel um, for for hydraulic tools? Absolutely, you can do two reels up in the front with a 28 foot extension, a 28 inch extension, excuse me, and use the center well for for uh, extrication tools. All right, I'm sorry, Jeff. Back to you. Uh, Justin, on the cab. Um, what is the uh, what's the cab to axle measurement on on this apparatus, uh, and what options are available um, as far as cab length on on this on the HR100? So currently, we measure our cab. If the cameraman come over here, we measure our cab lengths by the center of the front axle to the rear of the cab. This one's set up with the 58-inch medium cab. That's gonna maximize our uh, wheelbase of 235 inches. We do have an option to go to a longer cab if you need additional seating in the back. That'll grow your wheelbase to about 245 inches. Is the HR100 mm -hmm. available only on the Typhoon or is it uh, also available on, on other E1 chassis? Nope, it's available on the new Typhoon, our 2020 Typhoon and also our 2020 Cyclone cab if a customer's interested in a 100 inch wide cab. Okay, Jeff, I got time for a couple more questions from you before we uh, we switch over to the audience on this. Uh, Justin, on the pump, um, you mentioned that this, this apparatus is equipped with a Darley. Um, I'm wondering if there are, uh, if you have full body pump options on this, um, also like, a, a, for instance, a Hale Q-Max or a water or CSU. No, and just to show you a little bit about the pump panel, 100 foot single axle chassis, trying to maximize every bit we can in the truck and maintain that wheelbase. We have a very narrow pump panel, so we only offer the Hale DSD 1500 gallon a minute pump or a Watcher's uh, S100 1750 gallon a minute rating. Very good, thank you. Okay, let's get into a few of the questions we have for Justin from the audience. Um, and again, Justin, these are these are uh, these are coming straight to us live. Uh, overall height, the uh, w what's the overall height on this rig? That's from Jeffrey. Eleven foot seven inches. I'm sorry, what was that? I jumped on you. It's okay. It's eleven foot seven inches. Okay, and axle weights uh, as constructed that truck what what are the axle weights uh, 24,000 pound front 35,000 pound rear this vehicle as it sits and if you had the NFPA equipment allowance the personnel the uh, hose load and the water in there we're right around 50,500 pounds okay and that uh, do you have that? Is, that is actually uh, related to a question that we received. And but with without everything you just mentioned, what is what did, do you know what the weight is of that truck as it sits uh, next to you right now? Uh, right around the forty-eight to forty-nine thousand pound mark. Okay. Um, overall length. What was the overall length on that? This particular unit is thirty-nine feet eight inches in length. The uh, ground ladder complement. I don't know if you want to kind of make your way back, uh, back to the back of the truck. In fact, sure. um, uh, Jeff also he was you know kind of texting me back and forth here a little bit. He had a question about about ladder storage. Um, with uh, with the HR100, the one that that you have there, that that demonstration truck. What is the ground ladder complement, and also what is the hose bed capacity? Um, as we as we saw in the video, there is there is a hose bed there as well. Yep. So in this current truck, there's 127 feet of ground ladders. 35.3. That's going to be your 28, 24, 14, 16. We do have other options available for bigger ground ladders. We have done 35 foot two sections. We've even seen as far as a uh, 40 foot three section as well into the ladder. And over here on the side, we also have some pike poles and a folding ladder. Justin, I see that the- uh, Maximize that ground ladder. As far I'm as- I'm sorry, the, Justin, go ahead. Go ahead. 
I was going to show you about the host bed. So we do have two configurations of our five inch storage. This current configuration is rated for six to 700 feet of five inch with a single uh, stack of three inch of 300 feet. We do have extended hose beds. And what that'll do is it'll take uh, the full length of the body and give you five inch capabilities and up to a thousand feet of five inch can be held in there. On the, uh, on the ground ladder storage, Justin, um, I see they're on beam in this truck. Do you have an option to, to store them flat? If there was no waterway, yes, but with the waterway in this truck and how the waterway comes up through the center of our torque box, they have to be stored on beam. Speaking of the waterway, um, we have a question come in. Is the, uh, the can the uh, waterway, is, is it pinnable? Yes, sir, it is. And the pump, uh, you know, I, uh, on this truck, does this, uh, is this, is anything plumbed for foam on this truck, or is it even uh, an option for uh, for uh, for one of E1's quints? Absolutely, it's a full option. So you have three tank selections: 30 gallon, 20 gallon, 10 gallon. This current truck is set up with a 10 gallon foam cell. It is foam ready, so the manifold is installed. The only thing that's not installed is the foam proportioner system. All of our units are, are foam ready, and you can specify which foam system you'd like. To put in the truck when you spec the truck. Okay, uh, we have a question here. Can the five inch be put under the aerial like on your other quint? At this time, we do not offer a center hose uh, bed configuration. Okay, um, and wanted to talk, I, I know you're at the back of the truck. I don't, I don't know that we, need to, uh, that we need to walk around to the front, so we're good where you are. Uh, but uh, waterway capacity, uh, aerial tip loads, waterway capacity, and uh, does it have a rescue position? Um, so a four inch waterway inlet here and a four inch waterway feed from the pump panel that's going to be rated at 1,000 gallons a minute, any angle, any extension, any monitor angle and position as well. And um, the rescue position, I'm not sure if you're meaning for pen waterway, that's going to be waterway at the third or the fourth section, and that's a waterway at 80 feet or 100 feet. Uh, Justin, I just want to clarify on the waterway. Um, if I understood you correctly, you have no operational limitations uh, as far as flow, extension, elevation. Um, flowing capacity on, on this apparatus. That is correct. You can flow at zero degrees, thousand gallons a minute with the nozzle 90 degrees off to the left or right side. Now, Justin, this is a little bit of an opinion question for you uh, from the audience. Um, uh, obviously, you know, the, the, the customer is going to, to dictate, you know, uh, nine times, you know, 90% of the time, 95% of the time, exact, you know, what, what it wants and it's going to spec it out and the, the apparatus manufacturer is going to handle it. Uh, but this question comes in, um, no, I've lost it on the screen. What is the ideal wheelbase for a single chat, a single axle chassis? You know, a lot of that boils down to the overall function of the truck. What we really want to work with customers with is what, what are your, what's your agenda for this truck? What's its job? What's its purpose? And if maneuverability and, and wheelbase and all that is really important to you, then we're going to coach you in different areas that will help uh, maximize your wheelbase. 235 inches on this product is, the, is the, the, what we start off at. So if wheelbase is really important to you, then we're going to coach you in this direction to see what you can maximize on this truck with that 235 inch wheelbase. Okay, wanted to review a couple of things with you. Um, you mentioned, uh, I believe this, uh, the, the monitor on the front, uh, could you just talk about that real quick again and, and cover cover uh, what, what you hit in the video? Uh, sure, yeah, we, we can walk up to the front of the truck. We can certainly do that. I forget, was, was that, that was a, uh, who, who manufactured, who, who supplied the uh, monitor for, for this rig? This is going to be a TFT nozzle. Okay. So this truck currently has the TFT uh, monsoon nozzle. And really cool thing about what this truck has is we're seeing this a lot is a two and a half inch discharge at the tip as well. So the operators are going to be able to close off the master stream if they need to use that two and a half discharge as they see fit. So there's a simple crank turn handle over here on the officer side of it. They can close that valve really easily and have access to that two and a half at any time. 
Okay, now, I know I'm breaking the rule that Jeff and I set in the beginning, but I need you to go back to the back <laughs> of the truck again because I needed to talk a little bit about the aerial controls. Now, while Justin is walking back, Larry and Mike, could you talk a little bit, you know, we're, we're seeing a very specific uh, E1 aerial product here. Could you talk real quick while, while Justin's getting himself set up about the other aerial products E1 offers? Good morning. Thanks, uh, Chris. That's a great question. Uh, as most folks know, E1 offers a full array of um, a full array of extruded aluminum aerials starting at 75 feet and going up to the industry's tallest aerial ladder, 137 feet. We also offer platforms and a mid-mount design at 95 feet and a rear-mounted design at 92 and 100 feet. So it's a full product line of uh, E1 extruded aluminum aerials. And a half to one structural safety factor. Hey, how are we looking on Justin? We've actually built there, those yeah. aerial devices. I'm sorry, go ahead, Larry. We've actually built those aerial devices here in Ocala since 1981 and uh, never had a catastrophic structural failure. Okay, hey, Justin, while, uh, while, while, we're, while you're getting up there, or are, are you going up to the turntable or are you going to hang out down, down on the ground? We can we'll do it, Jerry. While, while you're walking out, while you're walking up there, uh, can the waterway be five inch instead of four? Um, no. For space limitations, we are at the four inch maximum for it. Okay. Um, regarding the uh, regarding the monitor, and again, I know I'm I'm making you jump around all over the place here. Can can the can the valve to <laughs> close okay. the monitor off and use the two and a half inch discharge be done from the turntable? No, if the operator wanted to use the two and a half at the tip, he would have to close off the nozzle from the tip of the ladder. Um, Justin, on let's jump back to the four inch waterway for a minute. What, um, removing the nozzle, what is the maximum flow rating on the waterway? Thousand gallons a minute. Did you said 2000 gallons a minute? No, 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 1,000 1, gallons, gallons a minute. minute. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay, all right. So regarding the controls, now that I've made you climb all the way up there, I wanted to talk real quick about <laughs> a couple of things you mentioned in the in the video. Uh, I wanted to talk about the remote or the, the radio controlled uh, controls as well as what's on the turntable. Um, with uh, with what's uh, with the aerial controls, or with the air, the overall aerial control system, on the truck, that is the, uh, as uh, if, uh, my notes are right, the deluxe E1 aerial control system. I wanted to just touch real quick on whether or not uh, you need to spec that particular control system in order to get the radio control. And then I wanted to talk a bit about what the end user is going to see um, on, on each one. Uh, whether, uh, you know, how similar they are. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, you can't have an entire, you know, turntable control system, you know, on the, on, on, on the, uh, on the radio control. It would just, it would be unwieldy. So just talk a little bit about what, what, uh, what you're seeing at the turntable and at the radio control. And I can repeat any of that if I just went off, uh, went off a little too far. Nope. I think I got it. You can tell me if I missed anything. <laughs> so the opera, again, what I mentioned earlier about sitting down with the customer and really understanding the needs of the, the department. And what I see in my territory a lot in the south is going to be limited manpower. So that's where the wireless is really going to help, help those guys out. So if in order to get the wireless controls, you have to spec advanced aerial controls deluxe, and that's going to be our top of the line system. We do offer another system below that, that if the department really wants to have a electric over hydraulic feel and get a really good operation at that but to take it to the next level go to the deluxe system so what the end user is going to see here at the turntable with the deluxe screen is they're going to have our traditional easy to operate just controller power and he's ready to fly he'll have his variable ramping all the the ladder controls are all going to be here the best thing about deluxe is you get this color screen here this is going to produce to you live time tip load distributed load angles waterway flow. I mean, there's so many things this screen can do to really help with the aerial operator's efficiency. Let's say the department chooses the wireless controls. Here's what's really cool about the wireless is, here's the tether right here. 
What's really cool about this is that the operator, he can get out of the cab, grab this controller. He's able to set his jack legs all while walking around the truck with it. So full jack leg capabilities. He can get interlock, he flies the ladder. He still gets his creep speed or fast speed. He still gets his variable ramping, still gets all of his monitor controls, ladder lights, and then standard functions. And to top it off, like I was in the video doing, automatic cradling with this makes it a lot easier to cradle the ladder when you're all done for today. Justin, that uh, wireless control module that you have in your hands, is that stored on the truck in a docking station that keeps it charged all the time, or is charging an independent function, or is it changeable batteries? So that's another thing about uh, being a custom manufacturer. We have seen these just stored in the compartment open, and we've seen these in special boxes where the department has to put this back in the box, and it's tied to the door jar. That way, if they forget to put this back in the, in the compartment, the door jar goes off and indicates, you know, if, if they forgot to put this back in there. It does come with a few batteries, and they plug into a traditional 12-volt cigarette lighter, and they can charge the batteries at all time. It gets a really good life cycle out of the batteries. I believe it's about that eight to 10 hour range, so plenty of operational time with this. All right, Justin, well, I would like to thank you for taking us around the truck, not only in the video, but, but uh, uh, letting us uh, ask you some questions live here. I know that's not always, not always an easy thing uh, to do, so I wanna thank you for that. Uh, I do need to get to our next video, though. Our next video, again, uh, is on a pumper this time. So again, Justin, my thanks to you. Stick around, we might, we might have some follow-up questions at the end, not sure. Uh, but uh, thank you again for, for taking the time out and for doing that video for us. Thank you all very much, appreciate you. All right, great. Can we roll the pumper, the bullhead pumper video, please? Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Larry Daniels, Director of Sales for E1. This afternoon, we wanna show you a really exciting truck. This is a new E1 Typhoon pumper going to Bullhead Fire Department in Bullhead City, Arizona. Bullhead City visited E1 during their fact-finding mission and gave us the opportunity to build their entire pumper fleet replacing five units. This and four identical units are gonna be heading to Bullhead City very soon. The 2020 E1 Typhoon pumpers are built on the Typhoon chassis with a 68-inch cab to get plenty of room for seating for six. Inside the cab, they utilize the 911 Seats Incorporated seats with the vinyl covering. The SCBA seats feature the LifeDock SmartGuard LifeDock SCBA brackets. There are dual touch screens for the v VMUX electrical system inside, as well as a severe duty lower dash and a severe duty upper overhead console for additional durability. In the rear of the cab, the engine access is stepped to provide additional room on the floor. Uh, for, for space and the 67 and a half inch cab allows plenty of room for storage underneath the rear bench seat. Also featured on the Bullhead Fire Department truck is a 13,500 BTU Coleman air condition system. The air condition system is wired into the shoreline so that when the truck is plugged in at the station, it allows the truck to be kept cool inside. For firefighting, Bullhead chose the E1 Emax pump rated at 1500 gallons per minute. That also has a Foam Pro 2001 foam system as well as a Waterus 200P Platinum CAFS system for compressed air foam firefighting. Our very large compartments, 60 inch wide forward compartments on both sides of the body and 70 inch wide uh, rearward compartments on both sides of the body allow for ample storage for lots of equipment on the truck. They also chose a customized C-Tech toolbox built into the forward compartment on each of the, each of the trucks. Swirled compartment interior allows for additional light reflectivity inside and being able to see inside the compartments while at night. At the rear of the body, we've got another large full height compartment, hose bed up top with a slide forward lift up hose bed cover and a specific compartment here on the rear for storage of the humat valve so that they can have that readily accessible at the rear of the truck. Ladders, pipe poles, backboard are all stored inside a ladder tunnel on the officer side of the truck. Again, everything stored inside the body for additional protection of the equipment. You can also reach these from the ground so it keeps the firefighters from having to climb up and down on the truck. Officer side storage compartments mirror the ones on the driver's side 
upper areas are shallow due to the ladder tunnel. The compartment over the wheel well also features a pull-out tool board or a swing-out tool board complete with pack track for being able to mount equipment on both sides, maximizing the compartment space. Both forward compartments also have removable access doors to access the plumbing and the calf system behind. The top-mounted pump allows the firefighter that's operating the pump to be up high for visibility of the fire ground and for additional safety to the pump operator. SCBA seats are the 911 Endure with the Lifeguard Smart Dock SCBA brackets. Rear engine cover has been cut down to improve floor space in the rear for additional seating and for additional space for the firefighters. The officer side firewall has been moved forward by about seven inches to maximize the amount of space for the available for the captain. Scene lighting has the FireTech 35 inch scene lights on each side of the truck above the rear cab doors. The roof is a 16 inch Vista roof on the E1 Typhoon cab. Out front, we've got a 28 inch front bumper extension with a diamond plate gravel shield for protection. That all houses a dual crosslay with two cross slays set up for 200 feet of inch and three quarter hose each. This allows the firefighters to be able to deploy their hose quickly and at ground level, and it allows for easy loading of that hose back into the truck. Thank you again for tuning in to the Rev Truck Expo. We hope you've enjoyed the trucks that we've had an opportunity to show you and that you've had an opportunity to learn a lot. Thanks again. Be safe out there. Please reach out to us if we can give you any more information. All right, we are back now that I've got my mic on. So uh, before we uh, jump into uh, Jeff's first impressions of the truck, I wanted to remind everyone, uh, ask us questions during during this. Um, again, if we can't get to you, uh, to your question before the end of this, uh, there is a Rev showroom meeting from, uh, from uh, let's see, 11 to 1, and another one from 2 to 4.30. In between that, we're going to have our education. So Jeff. Uh, just like uh, just like with the aerial, first impressions of the truck now that you've seen the video. Another nice truck, um, nicely laid out. Lots of compartmentation on this uh, pumper. Um, particularly impressive on this vehicle is the 207-inch wheelbase with a top-mounted pump. Uh, I think when we get into some more specific questions, I, I want to get into a little bit about that Emax pump with Larry and and how they were able to put a top mounted pump into such a, a small footprint module is uh, is larry over at the truck yet if we can if we can get him over to that pump module we might as well we might as well start there you know why not throw everything out the window even though i said we were going to start the start in the front of the truck and move our way back but uh you know we we've got a, actually a couple of uh, questions from the audience as well um regarding regarding that emax pump so why don't we why don't we start there i don't know if, Jer if uh, larry is over there yet um i got to take it away uh, larry why don't you um give us a, a quick overview on the emax pump its designs capacity single stage two stage um because uh like i said a, you know a top mount pump in in such a a small footprint uh pump module is is quite an accomplishment. It is a really good question. Uh, you highlighted earlier the 207 inch wheelbase with a top mount pump and the amount of compartmentation on this truck. This truck features uh, right at 200 cubic feet of compartment space. We've done some neat things with the body to enhance that a little bit, but um, specifically speaking about the pump, um, the Emax design is a midship mounted pump, single stage, and this particular pump is rated at 1500 GPM. It is an E1 design that's made to maximize the storage space and the usability of the truck and not extend the wheelbase. So you have the nice small panel here, you have the operator's panel up top, and then there are two access panels, one on either side of the truck in the forward compartment that access the plumbing, which is tucked up in the forward part of the body ahead of the water tank. That's how we're able to compact all of that down and get that shorter wheelbase and shorter overall length and still maintain a top mount design for safety and visibility at the fire scene. Thank you. Yes, sir. What is the, uh, staying, staying in that area, what's the uh, capacity of the water tank and uh, the foam cell? 
This truck has a 780 gallon tank, 750 gallons for water and 30 for foam. Okay, and uh, I, uh, in the video, could you just run over? Uh, uh, could you just run over the engine options again uh, for for the the Typhoon and uh, for I guess you know pumpers and and other uh, other types of apparatus? Sure. For you? Sure. On the E1 chassis, the uh, the new Typhoon features, and this particular truck features a Cummins L9 450 horsepower motor with an EVS 3000 series transmission. The new Typhoon chassis allows you to go the L9, the X12, or the X15 motor, ranging, as Justin said earlier, 330 horsepower to uh, over 550 horsepower. You, this one has the uh, 67 and a half inch extension for the cab. What are some of the other length options for the cabs besides uh, the 67 and a half? Our cabs are measured, as Justin said, from the center line of the front axle to the rear of the cab. And we start at 44 inches, which is typically a two door cab used in heavy rescue and some tanker applications. Then we go to 58 that you saw on the aerial. This is a 67 and a half or 68. We also do a 74, which is featured in another video on our website, as well as an 80. The 80 inch typically gets into a clean cab design or an ALS cab design for a rescue. The 68 is very popular on the pumper because it allows you to put SCBA seating across the back wall and uh, not get into this area where you're trying to get in and out of the cab. Larry, staying, staying with the cab, um, I noticed we have severe duty cabs this morning. Um, is this a new standard for E1? Uh, and uh, if it is your new standard, we are regular duty cab interiors still available? So we introduced the severe duty cab design to E1 chassis a few years ago. And what we've noticed is that the vast majority of the customers out there are looking for the most durable, most severe duty cab that's available. So we've actually transitioned our product with the new Typhoon and the new Cyclone chassis to a standard severe duty interior with extruded aluminum cab, um, extruded aluminum cab, a um, aluminum dash and aluminum overhead console. That aluminum overhead console gives you some additional features that you didn't have before, such as the ability to get in and out of that console without taking down the entire console for service or maintenance issues. Okay, and again, we are taking a look here at the Bullhead City Fire Department's Emax Rescue Pumper. I uh, wanted to ask you a question about um, multiplexing. Um, are you seeing, um, and again, this is for, you know, more broadly on, on E1 apparatus in general. Are you seeing more of a trend toward multiplexing for fire departments or are they are they still requesting hard hardwired wiring? What what do, you, what do you see with that? I mean, it, it's, a, it's a technology that has been with us for a while, uh, but is still sort of sort of getting more rooted to, to see more widespread adoption. E1 was one of the leaders in the multiplex technology for fire apparatus, and we, we have migrated to an all multiplex platform. So all of our trucks are multiplexed. Uh, we feature the um, Weldon VMUX electrical system as the standard. We do have an option for the class one S key multiplex system as well, but all of our apparatus are multiplexed. Um, there are countless, um, countless benefits to that from um, troubleshooting, to being able to even send program fixes sometimes in an email and sometimes in a laptop with a uh, service technician being able to sign into the truck, boot up and make make uh, programming changes right there. So we're a fully multiplex platform. Chris, if, if I can jump in on that uh, multiplexing issue for a minute, because this is something that, that I go through fairly routinely with, with apparatus committees. And I think um, one of the things that's misunderstood in the fire service is how long electro electronic controls have been around on fire apparatus and the level of multiplexing you get in the vehicle today, even if you insist on a hardwired one. Um, my 1991 E1 pumper that I had in my fleet, when you took the throttle off the pump panel, had two wires off the back of it, not a cable, go not a cable going to an accelerator linkage on the Detroit diesel. So, so Detroit went to electronic throttle controls on their motors in the early 90s. Um, in today's apparatus, 
even if you are insisting on a hardwired truck, the reality of it is the motor, the transmission, the ABS system, the electronic stability control, the dashboard gauges, all of this is communicating on what's referred to in the industry as the J1939 data bus. Um, your truck is 60 to 70 percent multiplexed regardless of, of what you insist on. And that's just, that's the way of the world and it's not going to change. That's a really good point. Uh, it, basically, the only thing that you can get non-multiplex would be emergency lighting and some hardwired, uh, some hardwired capability there. And at the end of the day, the benefits of that multiplex system far out, out, outweigh that option. Larry, is there a generator on this truck? And if so, uh, what type? This truck actually does not have a generator. Um, it has a, uh, a shoreline that is powering not only, um, not only keeping the truck charged up while it's in the station, but this truck actually also features a 13,500 BTU Coleman air conditioned system. Uh, this truck is going out to Bullhead City, Arizona, uh, one of five pumpers we built for them that'll be shipping out of here very soon. And that gives them the capability of being able to keep the cab cool while the truck is in the, uh, in the station. And there are a couple of receptacles on the truck that are powered by that same shoreline, but no generator on this truck. Okay. Um, uh, which discharges on this rig are plumbed for foam? Uh, is it all of them or is it just a couple? Is it just the, the bumper? On this truck, uh, we have dual crosslays in the front bumper, each set up for 200 feet of inch and three quarter hose, and two speed lays, uh, each set up for 200 feet of inch and three quarter hose. All four of those discharges are plumb for foam, as well as one rear discharge off the back of the truck on the left rear. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, capacity of the hose bed? I'm going to phone a friend for that one because I'm not looking at the drawing, but Mike's going to handle that for us. <laughs> this is Mike here, hose load. You got uh, 500 feet of 12 inch LDH, 500 feet uh, of 3 inch DJ, and 200 feet of 3 inch double jacketed hose. Okay. Very good. It's got a lot of a lot of hose bed capacity. Um, as you said, uh, it, we did some things to enhance the length of this body and still keep that 207 wheelbase. The truck's uh, shy of 35 feet long, but there's a lot going on with the compartmentation, hose load. The ladders are stored inside the body, as you saw in the video, uh, and again, a lot of custom compartmentation for extra storage. Chris, while we're on the uh, on the hose bed, I noticed that when when Larry was at the back of the truck earlier. Um, you know, the hose bed on this is quite high. Um, and I think it's important to point out to to our the people that are viewing this today that that is really dependent on what the department tells the manufacturer that they want. And don't dismiss a vehicle just because it has a high hose bed. There are several things that affect the hose bed height and um, it can be brought down. It really depends on the department and, and what they're asking the manufacturer to do. That's a really good point, Jeff. Um, and I did make my way back to the back of the truck to point some of that stuff out. Um, we have another video that's featured on the website revtruckexpo.com uh, that features another pumper, which is a low hose bed design and brings the, uh, the hose bed down to about the level where my hand is right now. This particular truck has a 780 gallon rectangular tank. And what that means is it allows those side compartments to be the full depth of 26 inches. And on the officer side, it allows us to have storage for a ladder tunnel for your ladders, pike poles, and that sort of stuff. So pure physics tells you that the hose bed can't go below that height. So that's the reason for the height of this hose bed. Uh, as Mike pointed out, it does, feet, it does fit 1,200 feet of five inch hose, 300 feet of three inch, and 200 feet of two inch. So it's a nice big hose bed. They chose the roll forward lift up um, hard aluminum hose bed cover. And then they've still got a very sizable rear B1 compartment that is a full height, full depth design. So again, as Jeff pointed out, all of these things are what drives the height of that hose bed. They also ask for a specific compartment on the rear to house their humat valve so that it can be readily available at the tailboard when they need it. Okay, well, I'd like to transition into uh, the, the uh 
the questions from the audience. Uh, we do have we do have quite a few. Um, stay stay where you are if you uh, if, if uh, to to answer these. Um, if you feel you need to move over, we'll okay. we'll we'll fill in the we'll fill in. Uh, but uh, one question is: Can okay. you get the Emacs pump rated for 2,000 GPM? And how much access is there to the pump for service? So the Emacs pump is rateable at 1,500 GPM. Uh, we test it pretty regularly in the 1,750, 1,800 range, but the maximum rated capacity at this time is 1,500. Um, on the forward compartment, the L1 and R1 compartment on both sides of the truck, there is an, there is an access panel uh, that allows you into the plumbing area, as well as the back wall of that speedlay area, there's a removable access panel there as well. This particular truck is a top mount design, so you do have the speed lays to contend with on the side mount design, tilt the cab, and that first, uh, that first panel pops right off and allows you good access to the pump. Okay, we've got more measurements here, so I don't know if we'll have to, to jump back over to Mike or not, but um, the, there is a question here about the size of the pump panel. What is the size of the pump panel and what size is the walkway? The walkway is typically 24 inches from the back of the cab to the forward part of that speedlay area. And uh, without looking, that side panel should be about 24 inches. 19 inches wide. Okay, what, um, since you're standing, since you're there, uh, and I'm not sure, again, this might be something we have to throw back over to Mike. What is the ground to loaded supply hose height? And if that has I to will be phone answered, a friend on that, Mike. And that might be something yeah, that needs to go to okay. the. Um, no, I've got something here. Okay. Two tailboard is 66 inches, and to the ground is 90 inches. Okay. Is the pump transfer a split drive transfer or direct drive? It's a direct drive. And is Linex a standard option in the cab? Uh, Linex is an option. We feature Zolotone as our standard uh, cab interior coating. Uh, that is a paintable surface that is textured similar to Linex, but not quite as aggressive. Okay, what are the suspension options for this unit? Uh, suspension on the rear can be spring or air, whatever your choice is, and suspension on the front can be the traditional um, leaf spring suspension or independent front suspension. Can you talk about the safety features built into the Emacs? Uh, they uh, they cite driver safety, suspension, et cetera. So the, uh, we build safety features into all of our designs, not only the Emacs design. All of our cabs are a full 3 16 um, outer skin with an extruded aluminum roll cage protection inside. Uh, that features the maximum amount of rollover um, stability or rollover um, stability and control in, in the business. Um, again, the cabs are 3 16 uh, ex 3 16 aluminum skin on the outer side. All of our bodies and pump modules are also extruded aluminum. We feature options for um, supplemental restraint systems, airbag systems for the driver, the officer, and rollover protection for the outbound outboard seating positions in the rear. Uh, all the analog brakes, stability, rollover stability control, and all of those different features for safety. Um, as Justin hinted to in the aerial video, all of our trucks, when we design those on the front end process, prior to even quoting those to the customer, go through a complete engineering design review, as well as a weight analysis, and make sure that what we're quoting to the customer is the safest and best application to help meet their needs. Got two questions here they kind of they kind of run in together a little bit hopefully hopefully it won't be too haywire when, when i ask them but uh, how many controls on the pump panel are electric and where are the manual overrides located for the electric valves and that's followed by for maintenance of the pump and valves are these only accessible through the compartment service doors or are they accessible through the access door also and i can go back and ask one or both of them again uh if i've totally uh, confuse you. So this particular truck, the valve controls are manual. Um, the hand, handles at the 
uh, top mount panel are manual handles. Um, we do offer electric valves when customers request that or um, sometimes they try to do that. They'll try to do electric valves to shorten the width of the pump panel. Um, each of those electric valves does have a manual override. The manual override is located at the valve and depending on the specific location of the valve in the manufacturing process can be accessed through the panel and sometimes even from underneath the truck if need be. Okay. Uh, as you can see, obviously, uh, this particular truck has... No, go ahead. I, I was just going to say this particular truck does have 10 handles across that top mount panel. So it's a pretty full maxed out panel up there with the foam system and all. I was just going to say, as you can see, you know, uh, with our audience right now, uh, maintenance is is uh, is a big is a big topic, and we we've covered that. I know Jeff and I have been at uh, events where uh, you know this has been brought up multiple times. The, uh, the the maintenance end of this, and some of it has to do with a little bit of the fear of the electronic valves. Some of it has to do with. Um, making sure you keep uh, your maintenance personnel involved with the design of, of the truck. Uh, so very, very important here, you know, ease of maintenance is something that, uh, that has become quite critical as we try to, I, mean, I shouldn't say, I mean, it's always been critical. However, um, it is something that departments are putting a lot of thought into these days into ensuring that if a truck does have to go out of service, it's out of service for a very limited period of time. Um, I don't know if you have any any additional comments on that aspect of it, Jeff. It's interesting, Chris. I was um, I was in a discussion group uh, uh, several months ago, and um, it was I believe in the room there was there was 42 fire chiefs, and and one of the things that really came across loud and clear, um, and it doesn't seem to come across when you're sitting with an apparatus committee. But the, the chiefs were, were hammering on maintenance and simplicity, um, and and more manual more manual stuff on the fire trucks because the lion's share of their um, the lion's share of the problems that they are experiencing in their fleets were related to electronics. Uh, that said, I will say that the electronic or electric valves today. Um, and the valve controllers are much better than they were when they were first when they first came out. They're much more reliable, and there is less downtime with them. And that's across the board with the with the valve and valve controller manufacturers. They um, they've all really kind of come into their own. I will also say that if you are in the snow belt in this country to seriously consider how much wiring you're putting in these trucks because the aggressive chemicals they are using on the roads these days is causing a lot of problems. Okay, Larry, I've got one more question for you. Um, this one's going to okay. bring you back around to the, uh, to the cab. Uh, it is, uh, it, it references when you were talking about the severe service aspects of the cab. And the question is, can you explain the switch panel uh, you were talking about that, uh, that, that is aluminum, the, the switch panels that are aluminum? Could you expand on that a little bit more? So uh, the new dash, the new severe duty dash on the Typhoon and Cyclone cabs is a cast aluminum product. Uh, the center dash is all cast aluminum and it allows us to have access panels on the top, release that with thumb screws and those open up to allow access to the electrical system and components inside. This particular truck has the VMUX electrical system with a touch screen on both sides, one for the driver, one for the officer. The overhead console, uh, it's hard to see from this vantage point, but it actually can come apart in, uh, in sections. So that center section can be dropped for accessibility and uh, maintenance issues or whatever you might need as well as the side sections in the current or the newer design it is actually independent from the air condition as well so just the center uh, just the center or the sides of the overhead can be dropped without messing with the air condition system all right perfect well larry you are now off the hook 
because uh, we are we are reaching the end of our hour here. I hope everyone has enjoyed the our, our first truck walk or, or our, our first two truck walk arounds of the week. We are going to be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. again uh, with two more E1 rigs. One's an industrial pumper and one is an ARF unit. Uh, uh, don't forget, from 11 to 1, we have today a Rev showroom meeting. So there were a number of questions that we couldn't get to. However, Rev Fire Group representatives will be available to you to answer some of the questions that we could not get to today. Uh, from 1 to 2, we have an FDIC educational webinar. It's called Must Haves for First Arriving, and it is by FDIC International Instructor Jonah Smith. And from 2 to 4.30, we have Rev showroom meetings again. If for some reason you need to go back and watch any of this over again, go back, see see how a question was answered, see a particular feature of the truck, all you need to do is log back in. These will all be available on demand this week. So again, my thanks to Justin, to Larry, to Mike, and to all the crew down there who has made this come together today. This was, this was a, a challenging feat to accomplish doing this live. Uh, via the internet. So again, this has been Chris McClune with Jeff Gaskin, with Justin Rice, with Larry. Jeez, Larry. It just figures I, I got so good. Larry Daniels and uh, Mike Vernick. Um, <laughs> I, I got almost to the end, Larry, almost to the end without a real major flub. And you know, that, that, one, just, that one just got me right at the end there. In any event, this has been Chris McClune with Fire Apparatus and Emergency Equipment. I hope you enjoyed this. Come back tomorrow. Don't forget to come back for the educational webinar later today. Stay safe and have a good one.